Okay, here we are on our beachfront. We're here to make um, Roger all jealous. Him and his nice blue sky and warm ocean waves and whatnot. Here we are in our frozen... Um, We've got our freezing river and our nice tropical uh, geese. And ducks. And maybe a few seagulls. And actually it's a reasonably warm day. It's about 40 degrees out today as opposed to a couple days ago when it was below freezing and there were chunks of ice floating in the river and whatnot. At any rate, on with some comic reviews. Friends, I'm Travis. And I'm Ethan. And this is Monster Comic Review. That's right. Here, like we just said a few minutes ago, on our lovely waterfront. Yeah. There are lots of criticism from the geese. Okay, we're gonna jump right into our third week of December comic books. What are we gonna talk about first? First up, we have Avenging Spider-Man issue 15. Point, point one. one. You know what? I actually like this comic. Um, I was not real keen on the whole Superior Spider-Man thing and all that, and and thought it was a bunch of silliness and a bunch of hokum. Um, it could be an interesting um, story. This is the first new, this is the new writer that's given the book permanently now, Yost. Um, and he kind of plays with the idea of, of um, um, Otto kind of coming to terms with the fact that even though he thinks he's superior, at the end of the day, Spider-Man always won. Parker always won. Parker always beat him. You know, and so um, it's going to be an interesting, I think it's going to be an interesting tale of embracing that and, and what does that mean and, and, um, and obviously he's a bit crazy. Yeah, I think he's a bit crazy because, you know, okay, so he should be standing around saying, ha ha, ultimately I did win. Because I beat him. I beat him this final time. But he's not. He's, I don't know, he's, he's got this instinctual need to be a good guy now. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting. What did you think about it? Um, it was, okay, it was certainly better than the other Avenging Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, this, that we yeah, read. yeah. It didn't suck. Right. Which is... I'm, I'm curious. This may this may actually get me to go pick up um, issue one of um, of um, Superior Spider-Man. Oh, really? Just to kind of see what it's going to be like. See how they're going to write the main title. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I'm not sure I could read any ongoing with um, Octavius being Spider-Man just because he is so self-obsessed. So yes. He's just like, oh, it's so great. Oh, I'm so great. Oh, Spider-Man one. But I'm still so great. And I'm just like, shut up. But please, I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind, you know, in our dialogue, that's probably one of the things that make comics awesome, but <laughs> shut up, yeah. I don't necessarily want to read an entire comic about Octavius talking about how awesome he is. Yeah. Well, I don't know, I think that's going to be part of the interesting part is, is that whole awesome, but then how do I understand, how do I make it all right with the world uh -huh. around that, so... Uh. Yeah. Okay. What will we write this book? Um, I give it a week three. I give it a very solid three. I I much enjoyed it. Okay. Next, we're gonna talk about Batwoman number fifteen. Okay. First of all, this issue was awesome. Yep. Um, in this, it's entirely focused around um. Maggie. Yeah, Maggie. It's all from Maggie's perspective. Great. We get Maggie's interaction with um Chase, which is kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I love how Chase almost respects her you know you know and i find that cool because i mean it doesn't really seem like chase respects anyone even mr bones is right. still just man yeah. she's got her own business exactly she's, she's there for business exactly yeah. and the fact that she chooses to go against what she feels she should be doing and help maggie that's that's cool. Well, it goes to show that she, once again, that she does have a few moral scruples in her. The fact that all the policemen are getting butchered, the people are getting butchered, and originally they were just there to watch and observe, not to actually confront anybody. Uh huh. Maggie convinces Another, them too. Right. Yeah, that's right. cool. Um, we find out, you know, more about Maggie's um, past life, how she was locked in the father in her father's shed and nobody came to help her. Because her family were, were quote-unquote good Christians and obviously yeah. she's gone astray because she's a lesbian. Uh-huh, super Catholic, and so they don't want her to go to hell. Right. So, right. Uh, and I love how she, as she's entering the church, her 
you know, automatic reflexes take over right. as she's dipping her hands in the holy water, so on and so forth. Um, that was it. Was a really good book. Yeah. It was really deep, and nobody got punched in the face. Yeah, and it was a break from the J.H. Williams um, art. You know, this is the middle of the arc, but for some reason he jumped off the book. All he did was the first page and the last page of it. Which was um, okay. Yeah, no, it worked, and it worked. And the art, the the guy who's doing the art, has moved completely away from trying to ape J.H. Williams stuff. He's just doing his own thing in his own way. And so it's fine. Yeah, it's not the beautiful, gorgeous thing that J.H. Williams III is, but I don't expect but anybody still, else to be on. Exactly. It worked. It yeah, worked. And it was great. The story continues to be panel and a bunch of, you know, thoughts along one side. It's working for the book. I yeah. think that's just yeah. really, Yeah, and really you know, incredible. I thought it was fitting that the two panels that J.H. Williams does that are all super pretty and amazing uh -huh. are the only two bat, um, panels that Batwoman is. Right. Just like, because yeah. we've commented on this before, that J.H. Williams doesn't draw it super pretty unless Kate Kane's being Batwoman. Right. When it's Kate Kane, it's much more no, it's simmered style. down. Right. And the color is, Stuart does a different color on it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's duller, but it works. So it was really good. I really enjoyed this book. Yeah. I give it five stars. I give it four. I give it four. Um, I, I, I really liked it. Uh, I, I think it, it, it's um, further adding to the richness of the story and, and what's there and whatnot. I'm in for the long haul. I don't care, you know, that it's, that it, that once again, you can say that this issue just drug out the whole, what the creatures are doing to Gotham even further, but it just enriched the character even that much more. Yeah. And, and to me, that's a lot of what it's about anyway. Mm -hmm. um, if it was all just the action or whatever, it, it, I wouldn't care about the characters. Yeah, this we, gives us something Exactly. We all know one of the biggest things that I look for in comic books is good character development, mm -hmm. which they have. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, what's next? Next up is Birds of Prey, issue 15. Um, we kind of quickly tie everything up at the end of this. Um, and get Katana off the team, basically. She's gonna go do her own thing, which a la, you know, the, her miniseries that's coming up and whatnot. So, there's that. Um, it feels like, once again, we kind of changed storylines to some degree. Yeah, Mid so midstream. Going, right, right. Yeah, yeah, we just kind of ended it. There is only one page in this entire book that I like, and it's Katana, after she's pulled her sword, uh -huh. her husband out of the fire, and she's standing there, and starts right. ripping Dripping. molten, mol molten metal, stuff. and she's going, I wonder, will you scream? That's yeah. awesome. I'd yeah. love to own that original page of artwork, but the rest of the comic, I, whatever. Yeah, it was very mediocre. I'm basically hanging on now, waiting to see what the next creative team's gonna be like on it, uh, and, and I'll make a decision from there as far as, um, you know, how excited I wanted to be about the book and how interested I am in and stuff. Attack of the Geese! Yeah, we're gonna get mom. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was, yeah, it was not, it wasn't horrible. It just was. It finished up the, the thing, you know, you get some more silly canary cry and, and oh gosh, what does that all mean? Hint, yeah. hint, hint, but not tell us anything. Yeah. I'm tired of that. Mm -hmm. Strong two, week three. Yeah, week three. Okay, um, next and last for this half, we're going to talk about Blue Beetle number 15. Okay. Hey. You're not going to talk about it now, huh? You talked about it when you read it. Yeah. But, uh, eh. It's oh. okay. I'm glad that we get to see um, Lady... What's her name? Styx? Lady Styx? What is her name? Styx is uh -huh. Styx. Uh -huh. um, that, she sounds interesting. Is she, is she the one that's running the um, interstellar reality TV show? To be. I don't know. But, whatever. So Ethan's being all coy now about the thing. When he read it, he was like, oh, I like this Blue Beetle well, in you know space. What? This I is like, kind of cool. I like space. I like the DC Universe space, but there is no DC Universe space anymore. So seeing Blue Beetle in DC Universe space and seeing DC Universe space was pretty cool. Okay, okay. And, you know, of course, we talk about the fact that there's a new book coming out called Threshold that's going to be, you know, more of the space-type story and whatnot. And, of course, when he made that statement, I jumped all over about the fact that, look, just last time we did a review of Blue Beetle, we were a bitch in about the fact that what take what this t completely takes the character out of his element and what makes Jamie cool is a fact hanging with his family and being part of his family and whatnot. If he's in space, you lose all that. But he just turned around and said, oh, it was great, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I have no uh, idea. Uh, yeah. You have no proof. <laughs> okay, you're right, None. I don't. I didn't record None. that. So there you are. Um, yeah, uh, b another bland comic. I am so not upset that this book is going away. Um, Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, basically. Man, 
We'll give it a what? What are we gonna rate it? I don't know. I don't think really much rate it. Okay. Yeah, it just is. Uh, it's very mediocre, and that's it for um this um half half, and we'll be back with a few more books in just a little bit.